Hello, welcome to Jask Draws. My name is Jask and I draw. Today, I'm going to be showing you the method that I use for coloring gold. This tutorial was requested of me quite a while ago through Twitter. I tend to do a lot of art where gold is involved and I get a lot of compliments on the way that I do it. Plus, I think it's fun, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And this is, of course, applicable to any other type of metal, not just gold. It works for silver, brass, any sort of colored metal also. So let's get started. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be recreating how I did the gold on this. But first, let's take a closer look at this and try to break it down as we see here. There's a lot of colors. There's a lot of shifts in how much shadows in certain spots, how shiny other places are, and there's also hints of uh, color. Some lines are also more blurred in certain places than others, depending on where they are. And some places have a harsher outline where other places don't. The same can be said, especially for this area of the, I guess, cape armor over here. Each of these sections is colored differently, and there's different level of light versus shadow in each of them. Looking at the armor on the forearms and the hands, there's a lot of ridges, there's a lot of lines, there's a lot of deliberate smaller shapes, but also real large ones. And then looking at the earring especially, we can see not only all of those shadows and shines in different places, but also hints of red from the surrounding area. So how do we accomplish all of this? It's actually a lot more simple than you would be led to believe. So first things first, let's get rid of all of the current detail that we have on here. Okay, now as for the actual tutorial part. So I use only three colors, including the base color. The turnip pen, which is a stock brush in Clip Studio Paint, it's a pressurized solid color pen. The blur tool and the airbrush. I don't use any sort of special materials or downloaded brushes. This is just basic stuff that you can find in any sort of art program. So for gold and for metal, one of the things that trips people up the most that people don't seem to fully grasp when they go to color gold is the amount of contrast and the importance of contrast in gold. Because gold and metal at large is a very reflective and shiny material, so not only is it going to be reflecting the light that hits it, but it's also going to be reflecting the shadows of the area around it. So it's almost like you have twice as many highlights and twice as many shadows. So the greater the difference you have between the three colors you choose, the shinier or the more bold your gold is going to look. So grab your base color. And then for a shadow color, I'm going to move the color wheel a little bit more towards the orange and red-ish, and I'm going to choose a very dark, warm brown, something like that. And then for a highlight, I'm going to move it a little bit more back towards the yellow again and choose something that is not quite white. Now, for gold, I always start putting my dark colors on first because it's easier for me to add highlights after I know where the shadows are. It's also just easier to see. So to start, I made a new layer and clipped it to my gold layer. For those who do not know what a clipping layer is, basically, if you have something colored like this gold here on its own layer, if you want to color on top of it, but you don't want to deal with, you know, your color going outside the lines like this, you can use a clipping layer or a clipping mask, which, well, clips it to the layer you clip it to. In Clip Studio Paint, it's this fancy little button over here, clip to layer below, and I click it. And then the color only shows up on the layer I've clipped it to. So to start, figure out where your light source is. The light source for this is kind of ambiguous. It's just sort of generally in front of the character and going in this direction. So because I know that, generally all of the shadows are going to be on this side of the canvas and the highlights are going to generally be on this side because this is where the light's going to hit first and the light's not reaching as far over here. And I'm just going to lay a big fat slab of my dark brown here in the back. And I kind of follow the shape of the armor since the armor is curved like this, the shadow is also going to be curved. And that's going to be true throughout. So on this side, I'm going to put another streak of brown, kind of like that. And once again, it's more or less following the shape of the thigh. And because the top of the thigh is 
bigger, thicker, more round than the bottom of the thigh and it tapers in this direction. The shadow itself is also going to taper, so it'll be more thin down here at the bottom than it is at the top. Only ever so slightly. Like that. So a quick pause while I explain why I am putting two shadows on here instead of just one. So when light hits an object, it hits that object where it is sticking out the most or where it is the biggest, wherever the first edge is, etc, etc. In this case, with the light shining in this direction, this section of the armor is what the light is going to be hitting first. Similarly, the light is going to strike on this side first. That would of course mean that areas opposite of the light where light is not hitting is obscured in shadow, so the inside of the armor here and then the opposite backside of the armor here. But we must remember that gold is reflecting the things that are around it. If it's shining, it is picking up everything in its environment. That includes the shadows of the surrounding environment. So, if this part of the armor is cast in shadow, and this part of the armor is cast in light, both the shadow and the light are going to be reflected onto the nearby reflective surface. It's also reflecting the mid-tones that don't have bright highlights or dark shadows. So this area in between the light and the shadow is being reflected onto this front part of the thigh, which in turn creates more light. And light casts a shadow, which is why we have another length of shadow right here, because this is cast by this light here, not by the main source. Let me clean this example up a little bit and maybe that'll help. So it's like this, the red is the direct light, the most powerful light that's coming directly from the light source itself. The blue is the shadow, the green is where there is no light directly hitting anything. And then the purple is the shadow from the reflected light. And in actuality, there should be another strip of reflected shadow or light right here because this section would be reflected off of right here. So yeah, when you're coloring gold, wherever there is going to be a powerful light, there is also going to be a deep shadow right next to it, as well as more bright light next to that deep shadow. It almost functions like a pattern. It's kind of complicated, but I hope this cleared that up. Anyway, let's continue. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other thigh, but I'm gonna select it out so it's easier for me to color. Once again, following the same curve of the leg, we're going to put another streak of shadow right there in the back. And then just like we did with the first thigh, we're going to put another line for the shadows right here. And actually, I'm going to make this shadow a little bit bigger because I want to be able to show off how the light is going to hit certain shapes and certain edges. So certain pieces of this armor are overlapping other pieces, so a shadow is going to be cast just off the edge of them. The armor is not very thick, so it won't be a very large shadow, but there is a shadow there nonetheless, and putting one here is going to define the depth of how the armor is made. So I'm still on the same layer, so very finely I'm just going to take my brush and go along the edge. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side, and I will explain why in a second. So it wouldn't necessarily make sense to put a shadow here, because in theory, if the light is shining from this direction and it's casting itself this way, obviously this side is going to cast a shadow. But why would you put a shadow here? There's supposed to be light right here. That doesn't make any sense. But if there was no shadow here, you wouldn't be able to tell that this is a sheet of metal that sits on top of another sheet of metal. It makes both sides of the armor look more equal, it gives it depth, and it overall will make the gold look more realistic. So now I'm going to go along the edge of all of the shadows that I've already laid down, and I'm going to add just little tiny edges of shadow in certain places where I know metal is either going underneath other pieces of metal, or are overlapping. Next, I'm going to erase parts of these shadows. 
take your eraser and go along uh, edges and erase them wherever the light is going to hit, which is on the opposite side of the place that we added the shadows earlier. And you're just going to go around and erase those edges. And it will further give the gold some more depth and a layered look. One other thing that I like to do that I feel polishes up the gold a little bit more, I like to do this. I like to leave little sharp edges that further define the edge that I have just erased into existence. It gives the gold just a little bit more shape, and there's just a little bit more to, to look at. Plus, I think it looks cool. So let me go around and do that to the rest of this. Basically, where there is an edge where I know the light is going to catch, I will erase where I put the shadow and it'll create an edge. There, it is coming along swimmingly, but there are still a few places that I am dissatisfied with. For example, I don't like how blank this area is over here. It's kind of difficult to explain knowing where shadows would be because I can see it in my head. So it's difficult to articulate, but because I know how I want the armor to curve, I know where a shadow is going to be. So for example, this section of armor right here. It's all going down and moving towards one spot colliding with this circle. So here in the corner where all of those pieces sort of meet, it's going to converge and this area right here will be cast in shadow. So let me fill that in real quick. So I'm going to look for similar convergence points, like there's going to be another one right here for the same reason. It's all joining in the same spot. I'm also going to go around at this stage and make other parts more curved to sort of accentuate the shape that the armor is in. Like up here, I feel like this would be a bigger shadow. This would have a little bit more shadow on it as well. Maybe this little point down here. Sometimes you can just pick and choose where you feel as though shadows should go, even though logically they would not be, because again, it's this is a stylized way to do it. For these circle shapes though, circles can be kind of complicated when it comes to gold, but just keep in mind, circles are a circular shape. So when you add shadows to them, those shadows are also going to be curved. Another finishing touch that I like to do is right here at the edge of certain places. Again, it's hard to articulate. I go around and I just add a little indicator that there is an edge there. Just so that it doesn't look so plain, it adds a little bit extra oomph to it. It really just completes what the gold looks like. The more time you take to define edges and drop-offs in metal, the better it's going to look. Because when light shines on it and when shadow is cast from these edges, it really shows off the shape of the gold. So the more you do it, the better it's going to look, the more refined it's going to look. So next, I'm going to take the blur tool and going one section at a time, I'm going to blur the edges to make the shadows a little bit less harsh. Now, the further the shadow is from the edge, the blurrier I am going to make it. The only spots that I'm not going to blur are the ones where I want to retain the sharpness of the edge, but everything else is going to get blurred. So let me go around and do that real quick.
now that the edges are all nice and blurred and it looks a little bit more natural, I suppose, I'm going to go around to every individual section again and erase part of it with the airbrush tool. So light comes from over here and it's shining in this direction, which means that it's going to hit this outermost edge of the shadow first. So we're going to take the airbrush tool and on the eraser setting, just ever so slightly erase it. That might be a little bit much. Let's go with something smaller. Very subtle, just erase a tiny, tiny little bit. You don't want to go too powerful because then it will make a harsh edge. And we do not want a harsh edge. We're going for something a little bit more subtle. So you're going to go around and you're going to do that to every single section individually. And I like to section them out individually because different panels of metal, especially when you have different pieces that are all converging in different areas like this, are all going to catch light differently. So by sectioning them out like this and giving each of those sections their own unique treatment with light, you get a far more dynamic looking result. So generally when you're doing this, you're going to want to keep all of your, you know, your highlights, all of your shadows, all of your blurring. It's all going to be in the same direction. It's all on the same side. You would erase this edge of the shadow because that's where the light is sort of traversing on top of. But what about on this side where the light isn't hitting? You should erase it anyway, because again, just the nature of gold, how it's not only reflecting its own shadows, but it's also reflecting its own light. That means it's going to be reflecting the light that is hitting this space where there is not shadow. So every single shadow that you have go along with the airbrush tool and just ever so slightly erase a little bit of it. And now with all that done, that is the bulk of the work right there, the shadow. Now you can move on to the highlights, which are astronomically easier to apply. So make a new clipping layer below the shadow layer and go grab your airbrush tool. So once again, light's coming from this side. So all you're going to do now that it's shining in this direction is you're going to take your airbrush and only on one side of the shadow where the light hits first, Take the airbrush and put a very gentle, nothing too powerful, just a light highlight right under the shadow. You can do a few passes depending on how bright and shiny you want it to look. The brighter it is in contrast with the shadows, the more shiny and polished the gold is going to look. And then if you wanted to, though it is more of an advanced technique. You can also add splashes of color from the environment in the gold because again gold's going to reflect what's around it so in this case there's a lot of dark reds so i would take a red color and underneath the shadow underneath the highlights i'd again take the airbrush and just oh so subtly i would add a little bit of red here and there just along the edges or along the base it's actually kind of a dark red. Maybe let's make that a little bit brighter so that it shows up a little more like that. That looks better. And really, that's it. That is the entire technique. It is mostly done in the shadows and then you just add the last bit of emphasis with some very generalized highlights, some blur, and maybe a splash of color if you're feeling fancy. And now that the thigh armor is done and you understand, hopefully, <laughs> how I did it, I'm going to speed through doing the rest of it. So I hope you enjoy!
And there we have it. The last thing that I like to do just to, you know, top off the gold is I take my highlight color and again with the airbrush, I go above every other layer, above the line art, above all of the color. It's it's on top of everything else. I make a brand new layer on top of it all. And I like to give the gold just a bit of like a lens flare type thing. So right here at like the peak of the forearm armor, I'll take my airbrush and just do a little spot or a little swipe. And then same thing right here. There's a lot of highlights here at the corner of the palm, so I'll just do a little tap right there. I'll do one right here at the earring because that looks nice. A smaller one on the edge of the dangly bit. I'll do another one right here, 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 and there, and there. It's very subtle, but it really helps tie the whole thing in. Like that's without the flares, that's with the flares. Very, very tiny detail, but it's the tiny details that go the longest. So yeah, that's it. That is how you color gold. So a quick recap is only three colors. Your base color, shadow color, light and highlight color. The more intense the contrast between those three colors determines how shiny or how dull or aged your gold is going to look. When you lay on shadows, follow the curve of the shape of the thing that you're coloring. Keep in mind areas of reflected light as well as reflected shadow. Erase pieces of the shadow where you want to emphasize an edge or a detail such as etching and keep highlights subtle but put them underneath the shadow layer. For some more advanced touches or atmospheric touches, take colors from the environment and airbrush them into certain areas that are right up against those colors. And for final details where the light hits the hardest, put little subtle sun flares. So that's how you color gold, or at least how I color gold. I hope this tutorial was helpful and not too confusing. It can be difficult to describe the thought process that goes behind doing certain things in art. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to clarify. And also, if there's any other tutorials that you would like me to do, please let me know about those and I will get to them when I get to them. I would like to do more tutorials in general, so please, if you have suggestions, let me know. In the meantime though, if you like my art and would like to support what I do, please follow me on social media and consider supporting me on Coffee and Patreon. Members get early access to videos, art, behind the scenes stuff, all sorts of goodies, and it starts at a dollar. So, you know, if you have an extra buck lying around, consider supporting my channel so I can do this for a living. I am also available for new projects and commissions on VGen, so if you're in the market for some art, I'm available. Anyway, that is all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching and for your time and attention. I hope this tutorial was useful and instructional. As always, this has been Jask Draws. I am Jask, and I hope to see you next time.